So um, my task here is to uh, outline uh, some of the reasons why civil uh, military relations seem to be um, uh, shrinking or on, on the decline, but also share from um, uh, my experience in terms of engaging with the, uh, diverse uh, security actors uh, and uh, uh, stakeholders, lessons learned in terms of uh, relevant uh, reforms and transformations that can be undertaken to forge healthy civil uh, military relations. Dr. Kelly has already done a, a, a great job uh, in um, mentioning that civil military relations are important. Uh, they describe a complex web of interrelationships, established norms and practices between security sector actors and other social structures within society. And this can include civil society organizations, community groups, academics, the media, the private sector, citizens, among others. I think what is key to really emphasize is to note that civil military relations is not a fixed process, but uh, we, be, we are beginning to see that the nature of civil military relations uh, is continually evolving. And we are also beginning to, uh, to see that uh, there is that acknowledgement that civil military relations are important for maintaining peace and stability in any society. Um, according to the Mo Ibrahim Index of African Governance, for 2024. There are, however, challenges, despite this recognition of the importance of civil military relations, there are challenges uh, which show a decline in the participants of civilians in security and rule of law processes. And some of the reasons for this shrinking trust uh, include the politicization of the security sector. I think while the African continent has done significantly well, in efforts to transform the security sector into more professional and service-oriented entities, there's still room for improvement. One of the reasons for contentious civil military relations in Africa has been the failure to effectively transform the post-colonial and authoritarian armed forces and defense forces in general. Uh, we've seen cases where there have been undue influence of the military in contemporary politics, which has actually tended to uh, lead to distrust uh, amongst uh, citizens. And uh, 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 building on this issue, the issue of lack of trust between communities and the security actors has also been caused by se several uh, factors, which include the uh, reality that sometimes security sector actors are seen as perpetrators of harm to civilians when security sector actors use excessive force, for example, and are not seen as delivering the necessary protection, civil military relations become hampered. So the failure to deliver security and protection more often results in citizens losing confidence uh, in the security sector. We've seen this uh, in several cases. For example, in Kenya, following the Westgate attacks, Members of the public were very critical of the uncoordinated response of the security sector actors during the uh, terrorist attack in Kenya. However, we saw that uh, the feedback from citizens and civilians was very helpful because in subsequent attacks, we've seen a lot of coordinated responses between Kenya's military, the police, and other specialized tactical teams. Currently, there are also ongoing discussions and ongoing activities which show joint operations between security sector actors in Kenya to respond to various security threats, such as the issues of banditry in some parts of the country. The other reason uh, that we often see uh, weakening civil military relations is when security sector uh, violate human rights. In some cases, a heavy-handed approach by security sector actors when providing uh, security can actually lead to this distrust or to this shrinking uh, civil uh, military relationship. We've also seen that in Mozambique, for example, whilst the security sector actors are being credited for fighting against terrorism and violent extremism, particularly in the north, but this has been hampered by poor civil military relations particularly through the uh, 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 reported violations, the, which include harassments at border posts uh, for lack of identification cards, detentions for uh, 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 civilian actors, and also use of violence against uh, uh, the citizens. We also noticed that uh, during the COVID pandemic, 
um, I think there was a knee-jerk reaction in many of the security uh, sector actors uh, in, in Africa, where there were heavy-handed approaches during the COVID pandemic, resulting in a lot of outcries, whether you were talking about South Africa, you're talking about Zimbabwe and other countries. However, I think this also contributed to some self-introspection where civilians had to uh, request for um, uh, engagement with security sector actors in order to manage security responses to uh, uh, the COVID pandemic in a human rights, people-centered approach. Uh, sometimes also poor civil military relations are due to the uh, organizational cultures, uh, which we see in the security sector access. There is, uh, in some cases, bureaucratic hesitation to really create room and space for engagement between the security sector actors and uh, the civilians. In some cases, uh, si strengthening civil military relations might be seen as too demanding or taking too much time, taking a lot of effort and resources. In some cases, also the, uh, the, the secrecy within the security sector access, particularly in the military or in the in, uh, intelligence, is often seen as uh, very important and uh, outweighing the need for uh, civilian support or citizen support. However, there are ways to strengthen civil military relations that uh, we can uh, uh, borrow from um, a number of case studies, uh, which can be scalable. The first one is ensuring the necessary legal and policy frameworks are put in place. I think Dr. Kelly has already outlined that it's very important to have robust policy, uh, legal and policy development opportunities. These are critical elements for healthier civil military relations. Uh, we need these robust normative frameworks which underline the importance of military professionalism. I think Dr. Kelly has already mentioned that uh, in her uh, 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 remarks. However, I think it's not enough to have laws. These laws need to be accompanied by you know, existing institutions which uh, implement uh, the provisions of these laws. And also they need to be accompanied by the necessary resources, whether it's human, technical, and financial resources. Uh, most countries in East, Southern, uh, East and Southern Africa, as well as in West Africa, has da have, have done really well in terms of ensuring that their legal frameworks and their policy frameworks support stronger and healthier civil military relations. For example, in much of the EGAD, SADAC, and ECOWAS region, member states have really ensured that their legal frameworks underline the fundamental principle of political control and democratic control over armed forces. This is enshrined in uh, supreme laws of these countries. For example, in Kenya, the Constitution of Kenya 20, uh, uh, 2010, which was revised in 2010, provides for democratic governance of the security sector through establishing accountability and oversight measures. The Constitution also provides for civilian oversight on security sector actors, uh, such as the National Police Service, the Kenya Defense Forces, the National Intelligence Services. The security sector is sub, uh, subordinated under civilian control um, and is subordinated through the National Assembly, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, uh, who are responsible for providing oversight and also regulating the conduct of the military, both internally and externally. In Namibia, for example, the principle of civil supremacy over the Namibian Defense Forces is enshrined in the Namibian Constitution and in the Defense Amendment Act of, 20, of 1990. The Minister of Defense in Namibia is responsible for the defense function of government and is accountable to the President, the Cabinet, and Parliament. Apart from the Parliament and the Executive having oversight functions, Namibia also has a wide array of institutions which provide civilian oversight to the, civilian, uh, to, to the security forces. And these include mechanisms such as the Public Service Commission, the Attorney General, among others. Similarly, in South Africa, the country's post-independent constitution of 1994, coupled with the Defense Amendment Act of 1995, ushered in a democratic society which is based on accountability. This constitution refers to the hierarchy of authority when it comes to civilian subordination of the military. So here you can actually see that uh, within the legal frameworks, there's an emphasis on clarifying roles and responsibilities. 
the, uh, in South Africa, they developed what was called the 1996 White Paper on Defense, which is titled Defense in a Democracy. This paper, the, the white paper, underlines the importance of crafting healthy civil military relations based on uh, civilian control. And uh, this is accompanied by uh, several uh, institutions such as the Portfolio Committee on Defense, Joint Standing Committee on Defense, which also ask the necessary questions in terms of defense spending. Another institution which is very important in South Africa is the Committee on Public Accounts, SCOPA, which also asks questions about def uh, defense spending um, uh, and also uh, ensures accountability in terms of the resources that are directed to the South African National Defense Forces. Um, another scalable practice that we can also think of uh, in terms of enhancing healthy civil military relations, I see that I have five minutes, is the uh, use of security sector reform processes. In many countries uh, in Africa, security sector reform processes have gone a long way in inculcating a culture of professionalism and depoliticization of the military forces. I can give an example of Lesotho. Following the political instability of Lesotho, security sector reform processes were launched under the auspices of the National Dialogue and Reform Agenda, which was supported by both SADC, the AU, and the United Nations. The security sector reform processes were meant to promote political stability in the country and also to support the country's democratization processes. A key outcome of this process was the development of Lesotho's national security sector policy and strategy, NS NSSP. Um, another way of also uh, ensuring that uh, civil military relations are enhanced and uh, become healthier was uh, in, uh, ensuring the addressing, uh, addressing of protection threats um, that uh, civilians face. This is uh, one way of ensuring that citizens feel that the security sector actors are doing something to address the challenges of security. Dr. Kelly mentioned that security is a public good. So security sector actors need to be seen to be delivering this public good. Um, we have seen in uh, most African countries that um, security sector actors are now increasingly becoming much more responsive to the emerging threats to security, including threats such as natural disasters. A lot of security sector actors in uh, the continent are, in, uh, are responding to things like uh, droughts, floods, uh, pandemics, during the COVID-19 pandemic, most African militaries were part of the rep response team. They, this resulted in them cementing their po uh, position as protectors in a time of need. In Southern Africa, the Lesotho Defense Forces has been placing emphasis on civil military outreach programs, such as building clinics, uh, engaging with schools. Uh, they actually have what is called Army Day, for example which is an, a way of the military interacting more closely with the population. And through Army Day, the Lesotho Defense Forces engages in activities such as campaigning against drug and substance abuse. I also want to mention the issue of capacity strengthening, which is also key towards uh, uh, advancing accountability and professionalism. In Namibia, for example, African, uh, uh, there's what is called the, civ the African Civil Military Relations Program, which is coordinated by civil society organizations like Institute for Security Studies in collaboration with the University of Namibia. And uh, this has played a role in strengthening stable civil military relations. But beyond Namibia, in other African countries, we are increasingly seeing the roles of uh, regional training centers of excellence, such as the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center in uh, Accra, Ghana, the International Peace Support Training Center in Nairobi, Kenya, which are playing roles in strengthening the capacities of security sector actors to engage more effectively with civilians and communities. They are actually providing what is now called integrated training, which brings together uniformed personnel as well as the civilians. So lastly, I would like also to mention the issue of addressing uh, corruption and perceived via, uh, biases. There's actually need to strengthen security systems in, in order to ensure that they are fit for purpose. And this can also be done by addressing things like corruption, human rights violations, and uh, depoliticization of the military. Um, and and the, the, my, my, my final point is on regional cooperation, the importance of regional cooperation in building stronger civil military relations. 
This has been uh, done through the African Union's border program, which uh, is uh, currently assisting the government of Botswana and Namibia to launch uh, a, a, a border cooperation uh, uh, plan, which is aimed at sensitizing communities living along the common border of Namibia and Botswana. So in conclusion, uh, let me just say that uh, security forces are most respected when they are subordinated to elected officials, to civilian control, when they are free of corruption, when they undertake their activities, duties, and responsibilities without use of excessive force, and when they are responsive to the needs of the, uh, the citizens. When they are seen to uh, be delivering, then they will be actually seen as a necessary entity in society. Thank you very much.